All right, welcome to this video. We're going to look into a little bit of binary in this video. And knowing a little bit of binary is going to help you when it comes to understanding integers. You know, we've already started looking into a little bit of the char data type. We're soon going to get into the int data type. And when we get into that, we're going to have signed and unsigned integers. And understanding how those work in relationship to the, the binary data uh, is going to help you a lot. So... Let's uh, first start out. I've got some binary data here, but let me explain what these columns mean. You know, right now, it might just look like a bunch of zeros and ones. So let me scroll down here. Uh, I've got uh, another page here. Uh, so first of all, binary is a placeholder uh, system, just like decimal. And, you know, we're used to the number system, you know, like, you know, 100, you know, 12, things like that, where you've got uh, specific values associated to the placeholders. So you've got your, your, your first digit is your ones, and then your next one is your tens, and then your hundreds and your thousands, and so on. Uh, the way I wrote this is I wanted to keep this to a single column. So if you read down like this, you'll see that you've got your ones. And then the next one, you've got here a, uh, well, let me not highlight the whole thing. You've got your um, a one here. I don't know if I can highlight just this, it's not going to let me highlight the whole thing. But okay, so you've got a one and a zero. So that's your tens. The next column over is you've got a one, a zero and a zero. So that's your hundreds. And then you've got your thousands and so on. Uh, you know, I, it's, it's hard to write numbers like thousands and ten thousands and millions and keep it to a single uh, column. You know, so if we take a look at a specific example here, like 836, what does this mean? So we've got six ones, We've got three tens and we've got eight one hundreds. Okay, so we're all familiar with that. We know how to understand, you know, if you take a look at the digital or the decimal value 836, you just, you know, we just kind of naturally understand what 836 means. But I want you to think about it for a moment in terms of the actual uh, placeholder values, and, you know, and start thinking about it in terms not just as a single number 836, but think of it as like I said, eight one hundreds, three tens, and six ones. Because if you look at binary, you also have a placeholder value system. It's just that the values of those places are different. So we no longer have our ones or tens or one hundreds. That's decimal. In binary, we have ones, twos, fours, eights, and so on. Every in binary, every placeholder is double. You multiply it by two. So you take one times two, you get two. For the third digit, you take two times two, you get four. For the fourth digit, you take four times two and you get eight. And then you go to your 16s, your 32s, your 64s, your 128s, and so on. Every placeholder is twice the value of the previous one. That's because we're in binary, which is base two. So every place gets multiplied by two. Back to decimal, we're dealing with a base 10. So, you know, we have 10 digits in decimal. So every place gets multiplied by 10. That's why we go from the ones to the tens. And then you take 10 times 10, you get 100. So the next value is the 100s. You would take 100 times 10, you get 1000. So the next placeholder value is the 1000s. Binary works the same way. It's just that the value of those places is much smaller and they double instead of being multiplied by 10. Okay, so now that you understand that, let's come back up here and take a look at some, um, some binary bytes. So a byte is typically considered to be eight bits in binary. Okay, so with eight bits, we go, you know, we've got eight zeros, and we go all the way down. I, you know, I couldn't fit all of them on this page, so I just, I, you know, removed some. I put some dot, dot, dots here. We're going to go all the way down until we get to all ones. So we go from all zeros all the way down to all ones. And if you were to count all of these and see how many different possible combinations there are, you're going to find that there are 256 different combinations with eight binary digits. Okay, so if we number those starting up here, 
uh, with 0000, and we'll just take a look at it as an unsigned. So if we take that, all zeros is the value 0. The next one, when we have 1, 1, that's the value 1. Okay, when we look at this one, we've got um, 1, 2. So remember, the, we've got our 1s, and then we've got our 2s. So we've got 1, 2, that's the value 2. The next one, we've got 1, 2, and 1, 1. So 2 plus 1 is 3, and that is the value 3. Okay, so if you, if you keep going, you'll find that you can count all the way up to the value of 255. 0 to 255, that's 256 different values, including 0. Okay, so the next thing to understand, and I'm just kind of going through some basics here uh, to help you understand, you know, I know there's a lot to, to look at here, so I'm just kind of going through some basics. Um, the next thing I want you to understand is that, you know, when we're looking at binary, it, the digits can run together very easily. Uh, you know, it's it's even more so than a long decimal number. You know, if we've got a long decimal number, we will separate it with commas. Every three digits, we'll put a comma. Typically in binary, we put a space or some type of separation like that after every four digits. And the reason for that has to do with something called hexadecimal. So hexadecimal is a completely different number system. It's actually a base 16 number system. So what that means is, you know, with, whereas binary is base 2, which means we have two digits, 0 and 1. Decimal is base 10, so we have 10 digits, 0 through 9. That's what we're normally used to. With hexadecimal, it means we have 16 digits. Now, you might say 16 digits. What, you know, what are we going to use to write those extra digits? You know, what do we do after nine? Well, what we can do is we can start using letters. So hexadecimal uses the value zero through nine to get 10, and they need six more digits. So we use the letters A through F. Okay. So what that means is we can count in hexadecimal, whereas over here, like an unsigned, we went from zero through 15, where 15 was all ones, okay, we're just looking at, at these four, um, these four, these first four columns right now, okay, we can go from 0, 0, 0, 0, all the way up to 1, 1, 1, 1, and just like we counted over here from 0 to 15, in hexadecimal, we can go from 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way down to 9, when we get to 9, we don't go to 10 like we did if we're counting in decimal. We go to A and then B. B is actually 11, C is 12, D is 13, E is 14, and F is 15. So the nice thing about hexadecimal is one digit in hexadecimal using the, the digits 0 through F can actually uh, account for all the possible binary um, combinations of four binary digits from zeros all the way up to all ones. So we can take, you know, what would be four digits in binary and we can represent that as a single digit in hexadecimal. And, you know, that's why we would typically separate these into groups of four is because those would line up very well with the hexadecimal digits. Okay. So the next thing I want you to understand is that what I wrote down here was just for a single byte. Okay, so like I said, there's the values from zero, zero, all zeros, all the way down to all ones. Okay, so that doesn't change. You know, whether we're talking signed or unsigned, all of those combinations, there's nothing in here that, that says specifically what this means. Okay, these are just some zeros and ones. In order to understand what it means, we have to interpret it somehow. We have to say, okay, I'm going to uh, take the value all zeros, and I'm going to interpret that as unsigned, for instance, and it's a zero. So the first few values, signed and unsigned, they're all identical. So, you know, you can see they all, they match, you know, um, uh, 0000 and then 1010 they're both it's a 10 
for a signed, and it also means a 10 for an unsigned. Okay, you don't, you know, you can go all the way down to the value of 7F, which is 0, 1, 1, 1, and then 1, 1, 1, 1. Okay, so it's all ones except for this most significant bit right here, um, which is a zero. And that actually is half of all the possible combinations. We went from zero to 127. So that's actually 128 different uh, values. Remember I said that there were 256 total. So half of 256 is 128. So by taking the first half of these as positive values, then whether they're signed or unsigned, they, they're still the same value. You know, this is 7F here is 127, whether it's signed, and it's 127, whether it's unsigned. The difference is what happens when this most significant bit becomes a 1. And that's where the difference changes. If we're unsigned, we just keep counting up. We go from 127, 128, 129, 130, and so forth. But if we're signed, we go from 127 and we jump to negative 128. And then we start counting down. I mean, it's, if you think about an absolute values, it's still counting up, but we, we went from, you know, 127 and then we went to the negative 128 and then we start going up. Okay, and you might wonder, okay, why, you know, why does it make that jump like that? And let me show you a, another video that I made here where I actually printed this paper out and you can see what it looks like if you wrap this around and then you can see how these, uh, these digits actually form a number line. All right, so here's another concept straight out of elementary school. A number line. I'm talking a number line with whole numbers, nothing like, you know, 1.5 or, you know, negative 2.5 or anything like that. Just, you know, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. And, you know, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, and so on. So with this, the reason I wanted to show you this is because I also printed out the, uh, the binary uh, representation uh, in the paper and you can see that we've got our binary digits going from z all zeros all the way down to all ones and the interesting thing is if we were to uh, curl this around and I have a piece of tape here so let me stick this on there okay so now you can see that we end up with that number line. So the, you know, the zero, one, two, three, and so on. And it goes the other way with negative one, negative two, negative three, and so on. So this is why, you know, when we were looking over here and you're wondering why, you know, the, the numbers went up, you know, uh, 125, 126, 127, why did they jump to negative 128 and then start going down? Well, it's because this number line, you wanted to establish this continuity from zero to go to negative one. So if you subtract one from zero, you're going to end up with all ones. And if you interpret that as a signed number, it's going to be negative one. Now, you got to be careful if you're dealing with unsigned, because with unsigned, if you subtract zero, or sorry, if you subtract one from zero, you don't get negative one. You jump straight to 255. And the same thing is if you have the value 255 and you add one to it, you don't get 256. You go straight to zero. So this can be the source of some bugs if you have a unsigned uh, number, whole number, and you uh, add or subtract right around those uh, either all zeros or all ones. If it's, a, if it's a sign number, then you get that continuity from positive numbers right into negative numbers. All right, so now, now you can see that down here at you know, all ones, we're at negative one. 
If it's signed, it's ne- if it's signed, I mean that is it's negative one. If it's unsigned, it's two hundred fifty-five. But if it's signed, then you can see that we start from negative one and we go negative two, negative three, negative four, and so on. So it it actually counts backwards this way, so that we maintain that number line capability. Okay, so what else do these binary digits represent? Uh, so we've talked a little bit about chars. Okay, so we could interpret these binary uh, values as ASCII values. And if we do that, then the first few ASCII values have some special meanings. I didn't write down all of them. I just wrote down some interesting ones. They all have special meanings. But, you know, the value zero, that's the ASCII null value. Uh, Let's see here. The value eight, that is a backspace. And the value 10, that is a new line. And the value 13, that's a carriage return. Okay, most of the actual uh, characters that you would represent that you would recognize, you know, like your digits zero through nine, your capital letters, your your lowercase letters, A through Z, uh, some various punctuation characters are actually in this range here that I just omitted from this from this document. But they're all in there. Um, you do get a few. Uh, well, no, few. you do get a couple punctuation characters here. Um, at 125, this is actually, you know, if we're interpreting that as an ASCII, that would be the uh, right curly brace or the closing curly brace. 126 is the tilde character, and 127 is the delete key or the delete character. And when it comes to ASCII, that's it. The, the actual defined ASCII values end at 127. You might find some interpretation of different ASCII values beyond that, but that's going to be implementation dependent. It's really up to you how you want to interpret those. Maybe there's some foreign characters there. Maybe there's some uh, line art characters, you know, so you can draw some, um, you know, some lines and, and so on, some, some ASCII art. You can use some of those char- some of these characters out here for that. But the point being is that you can take the same value like, you know, 7E here or 01111110, which is 7E, and you could interpret that as a number and say, oh, that's the number 126, and it could be the same number as signed or unsigned. It's both 126. You could also say that, no, that's actually the tilde character, because I'm going to interpret that as an ASCII value instead. Okay? Now, I also wrote down an interesting um, encoding here that I came across a few years ago. It's actually called the zigzag encoding. And it's really fun and interesting. You're not going to find support for a zigzag coding uh, built into your um, into your data types in your compiler. This is something that you would have to interpret yourself. You'd have to write some code to interpret this. But what this does is it starts at zero and it bounces back and forth between positive and negative values. So, you know, whereas the the signed and the unsigned, they go, you know, all through positive and then they start, you know, if it's signed, they start going through negative numbers. Zigzag actually goes you know, from zero and then one, you know, is actually one. But two, we say, no, that's not the value two. That's going to be the value negative one. And then three is going to be interpreted as, uh, interpreted as the value two. And then four would be the value negative two. So you can see that, you know, the the actual binary doesn't change, but how we interpret it can change drastically based on, you know, what we think that data type actually is. So this is one of the reasons why a strongly typed language like C++ really helps you because the compiler can help you keep track of what this data is supposed to mean. Because you can leave the data alone and not change the data at all. And just by saying that I want to think of this as a signed value or an unsigned value, you know, if we're talking, you know, something like, you know, F2, for instance, um, then we can say, well, that's either the value negative 14 or it's the value 242. Or if it's some zigzag encoding, we could say, no, that's actually the value negative 121. So, and all of those 
are the same binary digits. So the binary doesn't change. The meaning of that is what changes depending on how we want to interpret it. So it's very important to understand that. Okay, so the next thing I want to get into is uh, some addition. And I have a, another hands-on video where I walk you through, um, you know, what it means to add uh, in decimal and in binary. So it might look simple, but, you know, just, just hang in there and, and uh, take a look at this, at this quick video uh, because there are some interesting ways of thinking about even some basic grade school addition that will that will really help you. All right, so I want to show you some very simple math here. Now, I know I say a lot of times that you don't need a lot of math to program, and we're going to stick to some very basic math. I'm talking grade school level math, but stick with me because I'm going to show this to you in a slightly different way than what you might be used to. And I'm going to show how you can use the, the decimal math that you learned in grade school and apply those same rules to understand how to do binary math. Okay, so let's start out some very simple examples. Let's say we have 1 plus 1. Okay, so what does this mean? We have the 1's column. So 1 plus 1 is going to be 2. Because we're in the decimal system, we have... 10 digits to work with, 0 through 9. So we have a digit for 2. So we can just say 1 plus 1 equals 2. All right, we don't need to do any carries or anything like that. What about 5 plus 4? Okay, so 5 plus 4 is 9. We have a digit for 9. So we can just directly put a 9 here. So 5 plus 4 is 9. We don't, again, we don't need to do any carries. What about 5 plus 5? Okay, so that is 10. We don't have a single digit for 10. So what do we do is we carry a 10 into the next column, leaving no more 1s behind. So we put the 0 here to show that the, the leftover after carrying the 10 is 0, and we carry that 10 over here, and then that drops down into the next column. So again, we get 5 plus 5 equals 10, but we had to go into a different, into a new digit to get that. Okay, what about 5 plus 8? Well, we know that's 13. Again, we don't have a single digit for 13. So what we do is we carry a 10 over. Okay, so we're going to carry a 10 up here, and that's going to leave 3. We have a digit for 3, so we put our 3 here, and then the 10 drops down, and we get our 13. Okay, so let's take a little bit more elaborate example. And let's take 909 plus 215. Okay, so 9 plus 5 is 14. We carry 10 out of that 14, leaving 4 behind down here. And then 1 plus 0 plus 1 is a 2. We have a 2 digit, so we just bring the 2 straight down here. And then 9 plus 2 is 11. So what do we do? Well, we carry 10 of that over in here. And I know this is actually the thousands, but still, when you're working digit by digit, we just carry 10 of those things over. So we're going to carry 10 of that here, and that leaves one more here. And then the one drops down to here. So we end up with 1,124. All right, so all of that should not be anything that, you know, is, is unexpected. But what you might be surprised is that those same rules apply in binary. The only difference is that in binary, we run out of digits a lot sooner. So we only have two digits in binary. We don't have 10. We only have zeros and ones. Okay, so let's take the same examples. Uh, well, we'll start out with 0 plus 0 here. So 0 plus 0 is zero. We have a digit for zero, so we can just put that. Zero plus one is one. Again, we have a digit for one, so we just put a one. One plus zero is one. We have a digit for one, so we just put a one. Here's where we run into a bit of a problem. One plus one is two. Over here, we could just put a two, but we don't have a digit for two. Okay, but we're not carrying 10s, we're carrying 2s. 
So how many twos are we going to bring over? We're going to bring over one two. Now we're not going to put a two here, right? We're carrying over a single two. So we're going to put one two here and then leaving zero because one plus one is two. So that leaves zero ones left over. And then that one in the twos column will drop down. So 1 plus 1, it looks like it's equal to 10, but it's actually 2. 1, 0 in binary is 2, because we have 1, 2, and 0, 1s. Okay, so let's take a more complicated example. We're going to take 1, 1, 0, 1 plus 1, 1, 1, 0. Okay, so let's follow the same rules. 1 plus 0 is 1. We can write a 1, because we have a digit for 1. 0 plus 1 is again 1. We have that. Okay, 1 plus 1 is 2. Now, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to put a 0 here, and we're going to carry a 2 over to here. Now, we've got 1 plus 1 plus 1. That's a 3. So, what do we do? Well, we're going to carry a 2 over to here, but that leaves one more left over to make 3. So, we put the 1 down there, and then the carry that we have drops down here. So it's the same rules, only the, 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 the carry amount is twos, not tens, and you have to do that carrying a lot sooner because we run out of digits after just zero and one. All right, so now that you've seen that, you can understand a little bit here of what we're talking about. If we take um, unlimited digits, so... What I'm talking about here is the way that we normally think of addition, where we're not limited by the number of digits. So if we take 0 plus 0 in decimal, we get 0. 1 plus 1 is 2. 5 plus 4 is 9. And if we take 9 plus 1, no problem. We just add an extra 1 here, and we can grow our number by just adding more digits. If we were to take 99 plus 1, we just grow our number, and we say, okay, we need to go into three digits now. If we're taking a look at binary and we want to add 0 plus 0, we get 0. 0 plus 1 is 1. 1 plus 0 is 1. Uh, 1 plus 1 is where we need to go to another column where we go to 1, 0. Okay, and if we take 1, 1, this is very similar to what we do, you know, what we do here. 9 plus 1 where we had to go to the next digit, the reason why we had to go to the next digit is because we maxed out in decimal, we were at the highest value here at nine. When we add one more to that, we have to go to the next value, okay? And we do the same thing here. We say, okay, we're, we've, we've maxed out our, our, our value here. We can only go up to one. And anytime you wanna add one more when you're already maxed out, you're gonna to have to go to the next placeholder value. And, you know, you can see here, if we take 99, we've maxed out both columns. And if we want to add one more, then that one, the, the carry ends up going all the way over. We clear out all the other digits here, and we, we carry the one over into the next, uh, into the hundreds in this case. But the point is that we, we clear it out. Uh, those first two columns become zeros. And we do the same thing here in binary. If we take 1, 1, we've maxed out both of these columns. So if we add 1 to it, we just add another column and it becomes 1, 0, 0. If we take, you know, doing the same thing, if we take 1, 1, 1, we've maxed out all three columns. So when we add 1 to it, we just add another placeholder and it becomes 1, 0, 0, 0. Okay, so then if we take a look, I already showed you a little bit here of the, the binary values, you know, and I carried this all the way down. You know, if you take a look at this digit here, this is the, uh, what is that, 8,388,608. That's, that's how much this one digit right here is worth. You know, it's just setting a one right there would be equivalent to 8,388,608. And we got that by starting here at one and multiplying by two. One times two is two, two times two is four, four times two is eight, eight times two is 16, and so on. We went on, you know, we got to, you know, for instance, 2,048. Multiply that by two and you get 4,096. 
you know, you keep going. You take 32,768, multiply that by two, and you get 65,536. Now, the important thing is you don't need to memorize what all these numbers mean. Uh, you know, that, that's, not, that's not necessary. I'm just showing you the pattern here. And, you know, if you ever do need to calculate it, um, then you'll know how to, how to calculate it. All right, so that is with unlimited digits. We just keep adding as many as we can. But computers work with fixed number of digits in most cases. You, you can work with, um, with digits that grow. But, you know, again, you're getting into code that you would have to write that yourself. You know, the computer itself knows how to work with, you know, 32 bits or 64 bits. I wanted to put 64 bits in this video, but it just became too long. So, you know, you could extend this, just, just double this and you'll get 64. And it was just, it was just too much to try to put in this document. All right. So how do we represent this in a fixed number of digits? Because when we, when we start getting into ints in C++, a typical int might actually be 32 bits. And I say might because it depends on your platform. C++ runs on many different platforms. And, the, you know, whether we're talking about an int or a short int or a long int or a long, long, all of them have sizes that can change somewhat from one platform to another. So C++ will adapt to whatever platform you're you know, that you're working with, you know, and so if you're writing C++ code to run on your PC, that's very different than writing C++ code to run on, you know, a supercomputer, for instance. So you might have completely different capabilities in that supercomputer and, you know, C++ will adapt to that. So let's just consider a 32-bit binary number. And what this means is we're going to have 32 bits. So I've got here, if you, if you count all these up and my highlighting is, is not working here. So let me come over. If we highlight all of these, there are 32 digits there and I grouped them into, uh, you know, groups of four again, like, I, like I showed you earlier. And I gave you some examples here. So zero is all zeros. One would be again, all zeros with a one over here in the, the least significant bit, this is what's called the most significant. Or I only want to highlight this one bit right here. This is the most significant bit, and this is the least significant bit out here. It's just like you know, if you have a, a number like this, the six is less important, you might say, than this eight. The eight represents hundreds and the six only represents how many ones you have. So, you know, the eight actually is more important to the value of the number than the six. So it's more significant. Um, but when we're, when we're dealing with a fixed number of bits, we can actually call this the most significant bit. And this is the least significant bit. Okay, so, you know, I, and I gave you some, some values here, you know, 836, what would that be? Well, that is going to be, you know, there's a bunch of zeros here, and then we've got a, a 11010010100. And if we look at the placeholders for that, we've got a one here, which is the 512s, and then we've got one 256, and then we've got one 64 and we've got one four. So if you were to take 512 plus 256 plus 64 plus four, you'll get 836. Assuming I follow, you know, I didn't get my columns confused there. You should get 836. It's the same thing here. You would take this 836. What does this mean? Like I said, this actually means eight 100s plus three tens, plus six ones. So eight one hundreds, that's 800, plus three tens, that would be 30, plus six ones is six. So if you were to take 800 plus 30 plus six, you get 836. So it's the same thing. You can add up the value of these columns just like you add up the value of the binary columns. Okay, and if we take one million, 
the the value decimal in one million, you know, you can see that you you start getting ones over here in some some higher placeholder values. You know, I'm not going to go through all of these right here, but you can you can just kind of add up all of these, and if you do add up all all the the uh, columns where there are ones, you'll get the value one million. Okay, so the next uh, important number to understand is what is the value where you've got all ones except a zero in your most significant bit? And that actually represents the value 2,147,483,647. Like I said, you don't have to remember that number. If you come away from this video just remembering that it's somewhere above 2 billion, you'll be doing good. Okay, what that is, is the maximum value that you can have in a signed integer. And the reason for that is when you add one more to that, we go negative. So we went from 2,147,483,647 and we jumped to negative 2,147,483,647. And that is exactly what happened up here when I was showing you byte values. When we went from all ones with a zero in the most significant bit, that was our maximum possible positive value, 127. Adding one more to that went to a one with all zeros. And that is the smallest negative value. Okay, which if you're talking about a byte is negative 128. Okay, but when you're, when you're working with 32 bits, the values are a lot bigger. Okay, but still you come all the way down. You know, you can see as, as we start going other negative values, you know, the, the most significant bit still remains as a one. And you can see when we get to negative one, the important thing is it's all ones. So all ones, if it was unsigned, would be around, you know, 4.2 billion. But because we're dealing with a signed values, all ones is the value negative one. You know, so it was the same up here when we were dealing with a, a byte. All ones in a byte was negative one. So it doesn't matter how big it got, um, the, the pattern still holds. It's just, you know, what is this transition point from the maximum uh, positive value to the smallest negative value, uh, you know, right here, um, is going to be smaller in a byte. You know, we went from a maximum value of 127 to a smallest negative value of negative 128. But still, the pattern is that all ones is negative one. Down here with 32 bits, it's the same thing. We start out at zero, which is all zeros, and all ones would be negative one. So, you know, again, if you, if you were to fold this around, you're going to find that your zero comes back around next to the negative one. Okay. Now... Here's where it gets really interesting. And the reason I'm showing you this as a fixed number of digits is because we're going to start, I'm going to start explaining how the computer typically works with negative numbers. So you know how to represent negative numbers, okay? But you can also use these negative numbers to subtract in a very interesting way. So the first thing to understand, let me see, did I talk about, no, okay, so this is the first time down here, we're getting into something called the ones complement and the twos complement. So let me explain here, first of all, what a ones complement is. It's very simple to calculate in binary. All you do is you flip the bits. So everywhere there's a zero, you make it a one, and everywhere there's a one, you make it a zero. 
So if you start out, for example, with the value zero in 32 bits, that's going to be all zeros. So the ones complement of that by flipping all those zeros to ones, the ones complement is going to be all ones. Okay, so I'm going to explain what these ones complement and what the twos complement are first, and then I'm going to show you how to use them for subtraction. So hang on here for just a moment, and you'll see how these are actually used. But I want to, I want to explain what these ones complement and twos complement are so that you have an idea, you know, where, where these things come from in a moment. Okay, the twos complement is the way you get to this twos complement is you first start out with your ones complement. So you change from your number to your ones complement, and then you add one to it. And that becomes your twos complement. So remember up here when we were adding, and when we were maxed out, you know, like one, 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 and we add one to it, everything else went to zeros, except we, we put a one in the next digit, in the next column over. Okay, well, the problem is when we're dealing with a fixed number of digits, we don't have a next column to put it in. I mean, technically we do. Computers have, they can keep track of that carry bit. So they can, they, a computer can know that something overflowed here. It, it knows that there's, a, that there's a digit here. But if you look at the value that, that is left over in those 32 bits, they go back to zeros. Okay, so let's take the number one. If we want to make the value one negative, what do we do? We first take the one's complement. So we take all these zeros and we change them to one. And we take this one one here because we're dealing with the value one and that becomes a zero. So the one's complement is all ones with a single zero out here. Okay, that's the one's complement of one. And then to get the two's complement, we add one to it. Okay, so when we add one to it, we've got a zero there. So that changes into all ones. So remember I said that the, the value of negative one was all ones? Right. That was that was up here when we were looking at, you know, negative one here was all ones. That's actually the two's complement of a one. OK, so anytime you want to deal with, you know, the negative one, I, I showed you before that negative one is all ones. Well, the, the other way to think about it is, you know, how do you get that? How do you get that negative value? It's, you, know, you can remember that a negative one is all ones, you know, but what if you wanted to get the, the, the negative value of one million? Okay, so you would start out with the positive value of one million, which is, you know, this. And I, I read that earlier. And you change it into the ones complement by flipping all the bits. So all these zeros become ones and all the ones become zeros. So it's very easy to change that into the ones complement like this, and then to get the twos complement, which is the negative value of one million, in this case, you just add one to that. So adding one to that, all of these values, all these ones are maxed out. So when you add one to that, they would all go to zeros, and the first zero here would go to a one. Okay, so this is, you know, when you take all these digits here and you add one to it, you end up with this value right here. And that is the twos complement of one million, which is actually how the computer represents negative one million. And I think I showed that up here. So, you know, this is the, actually the, the negative value of 1 million. But now you know how it was calculated. You start out with the, the positive value, flip all the bits, and add 1, and you end up with the negative value. Okay, so, so why is that? Why, you know, what, what, is, what is so special about this 1's complement and the 2's complement? You know, wh what does the computer use this for? And let me explain this. So this is where it gets really interesting. So it turns out that 
in decimal, we can do the same thing. Only instead of a ones complement and a twos complement, that's because we're in binary. In decimal, we've got a nines complement and a tens complement. Okay, so I explained just now that to get the ones complement, you flip the bits. What actually happens is, yeah, in a computer, you would just flip the bits. But, you know, what's really happening is you take your maximum value and you subtract your digit. Okay, so if you have a zero, you take the maximum value, which is one. One minus zero is one. So it changes that zero to a one. What if you've got a one? You take a one, subtract the digit one. So one minus one is zero. So with binary, taking the one's complement ends up just flipping the bits. Okay, you're taking one minus zero is a one. So a zero turns into a one. And you take one minus one, which is zero. So one turns into a zero. But in decimal, your nines complement, you don't flip the bits because what does it mean to flip a zero, right? What, what, is, what does that even mean, right? So you have to go back to the basics and say, okay, the nines complement is you take the nine minus the digit. So, um, and we're going to work with a, a fixed number of digits here. Uh, because this this nines complement, tens complement, even the ones complement, two complement, all of that, it really only works with a fixed number of digits. Okay, so the 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 uh, the pattern or the method that I'm showing you really only works with a fixed number of digits. Okay, so if we take the nines complement of zero, what does that mean? We take nine minus zero, we get a nine. Nine minus zero is a nine, and nine minus zero is a nine. So the ones complement of zero, zero, zero is nine, nine, nine. And then to get the tens complement, you just add one. What's 999 plus one? We get one, zero, 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 1,000. But again, I put this one here in red because we're dealing with three fixed digits. And when we're dealing with three fixed digits, we don't really have room for this one. You know, it, this is like a carry bit here. You know, it's a, it's a digit that gets carried over, but we're still only looking at these three digits. Um, I could have done more digits, but you know, you can get the same idea. As long as you have a fixed number of digits, this will work. Okay, so let's take the value four. Another example here. We want to take the nines complement of a four. So what is nine minus four? Five. What's nine minus zero? Nine. What's nine minus zero? Nine. So the nines complement of four in three digits is 995. And then to, to get the tens complement, you just add one. So it becomes 996. Okay, let's take the value 99. Another example here. What's the nines complement? Well, nine minus nine is zero. Nine minus nine is zero. And nine minus zero is nine. So the nines complement of 099 is 900. And then the tens complement, you add one. So the tens complement is 901. Okay, so here's where you use these tens complement is with subtraction. So, you know, we're used to, if you want to subtract five minus four, you know, we just do that in our head and we say, oh, five minus four is one. But you can get the same thing by adding in decimal, you would add the tens complement with a fixed number of digits. That's important. Okay, so if you take 005, which is 5, and we want to subtract 4, we can get the same thing by adding the tens complement of 4. What was the tens complement of 4? 996. So if we take 005 plus 996, what's the value we get? We get 1001. But again, we're only looking at three digits. So if you take 005 plus 996, and you only look at those three digits, you get one. Exactly what we got over here when we took five minus four, we got one. Five plus the tens complement of four also gives us one. Okay, so very important. It's, it's a very interesting way of doing subtraction. And that's why the computer uses two's complements for negative numbers because it makes it very easy to subtract in binary because calculating the ones complement and the twos complement is even faster in binary than it is in decimal because again 
All we're doing is flipping the bits and adding one. And computers are really fast when it comes to flipping the bits. So if we take the number zero and let's just look at three fixed digits, that would be zero, zero, zero. The ones complement, all those zeros become ones. So the ones complement is one, one, one. By getting the twos complement, we add one to it and we're back to, you know, zero, zero, zero. With that one, they're carried over, but we don't look at that one. So what this really says is that the, the two's complement of zero is zero, you know, and the two's complement would, would be the negative value. So what's the negative value of zero? It's zero. You know, zero, does it really have a negative value? You can look at it that way, but definitely not for whole numbers that we're getting into here. Um, with whole numbers, you've got, you know, zero and you know, there is no negative zero and positive zero. It's just zero. Um, but when we get into a number like four in binary, that would be one zero zero. The ones complement, you would flip all of the bits and it would become zero one one. And then you add one to that and your twos complement. Interestingly for binary, the twos complement of a four is also the same value one zero zero. But here's where it works out. So if we were to take that same example of 5 minus 4 in decimal, we get 1, right? So what's the value 5? It's 101. In, in binary, 101 is the value 5. We've got 1, 4, 0, 2s, and 1, 1. So 4 plus 1 is 5. Instead of subtracting 4, we add 100. Zero. When you add these up, you get 1 plus 0 is 1. 0 plus 0 is 0, and then 1 plus 1 is 0 with a carry of a 1. And again, because we're only looking at three digits, we get the value 1 again. So if we were to take 5 minus 4, you know, we got 1. And if we were to do that subtraction with the 2's complement arithmetic, we do it by taking 5 plus the 2's complement of 4, and we get the same value of 1. So it works. The subtraction works. All right. So I know this is a, a rather long video. But the, the, the main thing, if you come away with anything in this, uh, what I want you to remember is that you've got all these binary values, which is just a bunch of zeros and ones. And then how you interpret those binary values is very important to the meaning. Are they signed? Are they unsigned? You know, are they some other encoding? Are, you know, are they ASCII characters? Whatever they happen to be. And if they are signed, then just know that any time this most significant bit is a 1, that means you're dealing with a negative number. And that negative number is actually the 2's complement version of its positive number. Okay. And it becomes very easy to do subtraction, you know, using these negative values. So instead of subtracting, you know, if let's see, you know, instead of subtracting 126, we would add the two's complement version, which is right here. This is the two's complement version of 126. Okay, so you can add the two's complement, and as long as you only look at those fixed number of digits, you'll get the right answer. All right, so that should help a lot. This, this video should help a lot to understand, you know, what all these binary values mean, how you're going to interpret them. And when it comes to, you know, ints, we, you know, whether we're dealing with, um, you know, um, numeric values of bytes or whether we're dealing with, you know, uh, short integers, you know, integers, long integers, whatever it happens to be, all these same rules apply. And, you know, you'll, you'll now be able to understand, you know, what it all means um, and, and how the computer works with negative values as well. All right. That's all for this video. Thank you.